Amen. Glad to have with us tonight Pastor Jamie Torres. Amen. Stand up, Pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. Ministered here years ago when Bishop was here and uh, here to visit us tonight. He was originally in Georgia and I was in North Carolina ministering. Amen. Amen. So we're going to reconnect. Amen. Tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Have y'all been blessed today? A lot going on in our nation. <laughs> But somebody say, Jesus is still on the throne. Amen. Amen. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you uh, so much tonight for the awesome opportunity and the freedom to come together as the body of Christ to worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. Father God, and to hear your word, Father God, to hear revelation knowledge that will impact our lives, Father God, and that we can walk in revelation and not situation that we have the advantage as Christians, Father God, to have your insight, for we walk by faith and not by sight. So, Father God, I ask right now that you would give me the words of wisdom, the words of knowledge, the words of understanding. Father God, I ask that you would give me utterance to open my mouth boldly and speak as you would want me to speak. Lord, I pray tonight that your people will hear your voice in my voice. And, Lord, I ask that you will use the word tonight to speak into people's lives into their situations, into their circumstances. Father God, let the body of Christ here at the Lighthouse Freedom Center be edified, built up, strengthened, refreshed, revived in the inner man like never before. Lord, I thank you it won't just be information, but an impartation of your spirit to bring the grace of God. So we'll not only be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. So Father, I thank you for what you're going to do in advance. In Jesus' mighty name, if you believe it, say amen. I want to minister tonight on fight for the blessing. Fight for the blessing. You know, the opposition that we face in life is for the blessing of God that God has placed on our lives. The opposition currently that this nation is under right now is the opposition to try to take away the blessing of God off of a nation. The time is here, ladies and gentlemen, that we must truly live our lives by faith, trusting and relying on on the supernatural power of God. It's no more time for just reading about the stories in the Bible. It's time for the Bible stories to be demonstrated in our lives. It's time for Red Seas to be split in our lives. How many people know if God can split a Red Sea, he can put your marriage back together? If God can split a Red Sea, he can take what the devil meant for evil and turn it around for your good. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. He's, he's believing that his people in this time and, 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 and season that we're in will take him at his word. How many people know that's why they seen miracles in those days? Because they took God for his word. They realized that there was nothing that was too hard for the Lord. Don't you know that even right now, currently, with whatever you're facing in your life, it's not too hard for God. God is able. I don't care how long it's been dead. If they had the, the, the funeral, <laughs> the benediction, the people already went home and it's been gone for years. God is able to resurrect what people have called dead in your life. Somebody say he's the God of the resurrection. He's the God of the blessing. We might as well start it from the beginning. They may say this right now. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Tonight, the Lord wants your, his people to come into the reality that you're blessed. So much going on in our nation right now. And for Christians, don't bow down in fear. Now, I heard y'all singing, rise up. The blessing is designed to ri raise your life up, up and beyond any situation or circumstances that you may face in life. So you have that in your life and on your life right now. Now, to understand the blessing of God, the Lord wants us to have it. We have to go back to the beginning. Somebody say the beginning. Gentlemen, pull up Genesis 1, 27 and 28. Amen. Where's Jenny at? You, you could have came up too. Yeah. <laughs> Come on up. Yeah. Amen. Genesis 1, 27 and 28. The Bible says, so God created man in his own image and in the image of God created he, him, male and female created he them. And, and, and the Bible says, and God what? God blessed them. 
And then God said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over everything that moveth upon the earth. Notice, it said that he blessed them, and then he told them to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. They could not be fruitful and multiply without the blessing of God. Now, the blessing means an empowerment that comes on your life, an empowerment to prosper you, to cause you to be a success in life. So when I talk about a blessing, sometimes I say, I'm blessed. But it's more than just saying, I'm blessed. You have to realize that there is a force that's at work in your life when you accept it, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's a force to push you into victory, to push you into triumph, to push you out of defeat, to push you into restoration. There's a power that's at work in your life. And it's time for Christians to begin to release their faith in the power of the blessing of God that's on their life. That's one uh, declaration that I make every day. I walk out and say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed going in today. I'm blessed coming out. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above, never again beneath. I'm blessed. I want it to be a reality. I want life, when life hits me, that it comes into an encounter with the blessing of God on my life. And if I got the blessing, life is not going to take me down. The blessing is going to rise me up above life and cause me to have a testimony of the goodness of God. Somebody say, I'm blessed. Get it in your spirit tonight. I'm blessed. I ain't got a dollar to my name, but I'm blessed. I'm dealing with this, I'm dealing with that, but that's all right. That don't negate the fact that I'm blessed. And God gave me the blessing to fix what is broken in my life. I'm blessed. Say it, I'm blessed. We got to break the mindset of, you know, I'm under a generational curse. The generational curse got blessed when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I'm not under no generational curse of my father or my mother. I'm under the generational blessing of the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of Isaac, the blessing of Jacob, the blessing of Jesus Christ, the blessing of the Lord. It maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow with it. Somebody say, I'm blessed. We were originally created in life to succeed by God. That's why every, in every human being, there's a fight to be better. There's a fight to do better. You can't escape it. It's in your DNA. Anybody ever hit rock bottom? Even in a rock bottom state, you said, you said I got to get up. I got to get beyond this. I, 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 I can't keep repeating the, this, this thing. And something in you causes you to get up after being devastated by life. What is that? That's, that's something that God put in you, a desire. You're, you're created to be kings and priests of the most high God. That's in you. You can't pray it away. You can't fast it away. You can't try to act false humility. It's in you. The blessing is God's power in your life to push you into victory. We were never meant to live without it. Gentlemen, Proverbs 10, 22. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow with it. Somebody say the blessing is making me rich. Where every area of your life where you're experiencing poverty, the blessing is at work right now to turn that poverty into wealth. You may have a deficit in relationships. God is going to bless your life so you'll be rich in relationships, rich in joy, rich in peace, rich in prosperity, rich in healing, rich in, the, in your covenant rights and your covenant pr principle. God wants you to live a life of overflow. The Bible says that Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly not just abundant but more abundantly overflowing to impact everybody around you amen somebody say i'm blessed say, look at your neighbor say this is some good news 
This is better than the news that they were playing this afternoon. Oh, my God. Thank you, Pastor Tone, that I'm not affected at what's going on in Washington, D.C., or this state or that state. I'm in a state. Uh, I live in a state of the, of the state of the blessing. Amen. I live in a blessed state. <laughs> blessed state. And it's a blessed state. Whether I'm in Florida or Georgia or North Carolina, I'm in a blessed state. I'm blessed wherever I go. When I talk about the blessing, if you didn't guys don't understand this, I'm actually preaching the gospel. That's the gospel? Let's show them, gentlemen. Galatians 3, 8 through 9. The Bible says in the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In you shall all nations be blessed. <laughs> So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Why do you think Jesus came back? To just secure our eternal destiny? That's what part of it. But Jesus is concerned how you live right now on planet Earth. He's not a God that I'll bless you when you, get, when you die and you get to heaven. No, Jesus said, I'm picking up where Adam blew it. Amen. He blew that garden in the, in the, he blew that blessing in the garden of Eden and the those that accept me and have faith in my death, burial, and resurrection receive what Adam lost in the garden of Eden. And you're blessed. And I want to restore the original intent that I had for your life. And that's for you to be blessed. Why did I get caught out on drugs? Because I wasn't blessed. I was living in a curse. Why was I going from state to state, from this and that, getting caught in drugs, alcohol, robbing, stealing, all this fooling? What was that? It wasn't the blessing. It was the curse. Don't you notice I'm in the same state? Amen. Oh, my God, the same state I used to get trouble in. The same state I would get arrested in. But I'm not getting arrested now. I'm preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ in the same city, in a church. What did that? It was the blessing that came on my life when I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior and it raised my life up above that drug stuff. Look at your name and say, he's preaching the gospel tonight. I mean, Jesus went to the cross. I can preach that. But now what's the effects of him going to the cross. What was the result? Why did he say it is finished? I'm blessed. So Adam and Eve had this on their lives. And Satan absolutely despised them. The devil despises people that are blessed. Because of it, he tricked them. And got them to believe a lie to get the blessing off of their lives. To live in the blessing, you have to live in truth. Let me say that again. To live in the blessing, you can't live in a lie. You have to live in the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Life in the blessing for them was glorious. Life without the blessing was hell on earth. When that blessing lifted, they began to have strife in the house, confusion in the house, and then we have the first recorded murder between two brothers when the blessing wasn't in the picture. But even though they lost it, it was the Lord always looking for someone to put the blessing on. And he found men like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then, of course, the whole nation of Israel. So tonight, we're bringing you into the realization of, the, of what you as a Christian possess, that you are blessed. But how many people know this, like he said, is faith activated? You active, how many people know you can, if you don't know you have, you're walking around the streets of Tampa homeless and you don't have the knowledge that there's a bank account with your name on it, amen, that an inheritance that's been left from you. How many people know you'll live below your privileges? You'll tolerate stuff you're not supposed to tolerate. you on the corner panhandling and you should be living in a mansion, amen, because Jesus left you an inheritance. 
And he does not want you living below your means. But you got to put a demand on the blessing and don't accept anything less. When a door closes, say that must not be the door because the blessing is still working. But there is an open door because I'm not happy about where I'm at. Something in my spirit is telling me that God has better for my life. And you begin to make a demand on the blessing of God. Before the blessing came into your life, you were actually under a curse. Curse means an imp- just the opposite of the blessing. An empowerment of force working against you. You, you. you get two steps ahead and then it knocks you three steps back. You, you get a job and it's going good and then they lay you off. That, that's a curse that's working in your life. Amen. But, but when the blessing comes, it begins to change those outcomes that you always have a favorable outcome. No, 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 I'm not saying we don't go through stuff. We go through stuff, but don't let a tragedy become the end of a story because the blessing will turn a tragedy into a testimony of the goodness and the glory of God Almighty. was tragic what happened to him oh don't don't you better not stop right there keep read on amen somebody say there's another chapter oh there is oh my god i thought that was the end of the book what's that a little oh yeah oh my god there's another chapter what's this oh my god he got back up got it all back blessed seven times my, my god oh this was a good story with a good ending amen Yes. So you were under a curse before Christ. But when you got saved, somebody say all that changed. Sometimes it changed and you don't even realize it changed. Because sometimes we're looking for a feeling. Sometimes we're looking for uh, things on the outside to change. But how many people know that before it changes on the outside, God changes it in the spirit realm. Amen. Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. Amen. My words, you can't see them. You can't, you can't smell them. Amen. But you hear them, but they will produce, they will manifest the life of God in your life. Amen. Gentlemen, Galatians 3, 13 and 14. This is what the church needs right now to know that it's blessed. And this is for the churches that's standing, not the ones that went and hide away. This is for the church of Jesus Christ that's standing in the truth of the word of God that has not compromised the word of God, that did not sell out for money or for a label or for a brand or this or that. Only thing they want to know is Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's the brand. That's the label. That's who this message is for. Galatians 3, 13 and 14, the Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on. Somebody say something's on you. Might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith now of course the holy spirit is the administrator of the blessing amen you can't separate it notice we are redeemed from the curse and now the blessing is on our lives it's a force like i said that's pushing us into victories causing our lives to be fruitful what is amazing about the blessing though ladies and gentlemen the blessing of god works in your life in any situation it will turn a seemingly bad situation into a good situation when i got saved there was a man in a jail cell and he told me he said listen i didn't understand what he was saying sometimes see sometimes people tell you stuff and you don't really even realize what they're saying it's almost like it goes over your head and he told me he said and I'm telling the man, I got to deal with this case and this case. And he just chuckled. He just laughed. And he said, listen, uh, to- Brother Tony, your life is in the hands of the Almighty. Your, everything is going to work out for your good. You'll never be in this life alone again. And the God that you gave your life to is going to make sure that you always come out on top. Amen. So you might as well get happy now. 
Don't wait till he does it. Don't wait till they let you out of this jail. You might as well get happy now about my good, about his goodness that's about to show up in your life because I'm, I'm a witness. I've been serving him, and he, he's about to demonstrate his goodness in your life. How true those words were. And I realized I was blessed in jail. In jail, I didn't have a dollar to my name. But people were giving me canteen. And I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, uh, uh, no uh, ointment. I was involved in a bad accident. I had all busted up. Somebody coming by, hey, hey, the Lord told me to give you this, this ointment to put on your head. I'm like, what? The Lord told me to give you this Bible. And, and then, then, then on top of that, the Lord gave me a peace that passes all knowledge and all understanding. And I felt more free in jail than as a Christian, than outside as a sinner. It, the blessing not only blessed me in jail, the blessing got me out of jail. <laughs> the blessing got me to the lighthouse. Oh, I better say that one again because you think your probation officer did it. You think your mama did it. You think you just was going through a list of numbers and came along that number by accident. You got to realize that it was the, 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 the invisible one was working behind the scenes to navigate your life and get you right to the place that you need to be. That's why the fight you're going through right now because the devil knows what the Lord is trying to do. He's trying to bless your life and he does not want you to be blessed. He's trying to fight you with tooth and nail to make you give up before the blessing begins to manifest the goodness of God in your life. Don't give up the blessing got me to the lighthouse the blessing got me through the lighthouse taught me discipleship training taught me how to live the word of God the blessing revealed to me my divine calling what I was created for the blessing was even it with me in my Jonah season and brought me back into my calling, brought me out of disobedience, and brought me back into obedience. So you see, think you sometimes we think like God is like our friends. That because you blow it, he's going to leave you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll be with you always. His love is unconditional. It's not based on anything you can do. It's based on what Jesus did. season of Jonah it brought me back into my calling it gave me the opportunity the bless somebody say the blessing to be a husband a father it gave me my gave me strength and grace in my process to cause me to be standing here right now and it's still working to take me to new levels in my life somebody say the blessing why would I get out of something like that that's been impacting my life, that's been increasing my life, that's been having me excelling everything I've ever wanted in life? The blessing has been producing it, amen? So why would I get out of that? Why would I not recognize that? Why would I not celebrate? That's why I say you got to be out of your mind to disconnect from the church of Jesus Christ. Close the church now. Are you How are you going to close down what God opened? You don't have the authority. He said the gates of hell, they were singing it, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. So anything that originates from hell cannot prevail against the church. So why would you close it down? Look at your name and say, oh, there he is again talking about the church. My Lord, so don't want to leave that alone. There's some words out this year. I know we got the, the word stand, but there's some prophets that's been saying this is the year of the local church. This is time for the church of Jesus Christ not to close down, but to open up and let the people come in. Amen. The people are going to be looking for light. The people need answers. The people need a solution. And you cannot shut the door on the Lord's harvest. You got to open up. My God, what are you waiting for? This is the end time. This is it. Everything we've ever preached about, anything we've ever prophesied about, fasted about, all it is for such a time as this. 
What are you waiting for? Did it get worse? It's not time yet. It's not my season. What are you waiting for? The Antichrist? The mark of the beast? I mean, what are you waiting for? I don't want to be here for all that. I'd rather get the work done now and get out of here. Amen? I don't want to be here for no great tribulation and all that. No, let's do our work. Amen. And that's what we're getting to in the Sunday messages. We're getting there. It's crazy. I wrote that message out, and each week I can't get to the end. It's like the Lord expands it. He said, nope, not time for the end. Keep expanding it. Keep expanding it. <laughs> like the never-ending story. <laughs> My God. Gentlemen, Genesis 39. Let's take a look at the blessing in action. Say somebody, somebody say in action. It's an action word. It's not just to say I'm blessed. No, show me it. Let's see it. Amen. Genesis 39, 1 through 6. The Bible says, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, Bought him of the hands of the Ishlamites, which had brought him down hither. And the Lord, somebody say the Lord, was with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him and made him overseer over his house. And all that he had, he put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he'd made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. Somebody say, in Joseph's hand. And he knew not all that he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. So as you read this, this sounds like Joseph is in a good place. Well, yes and no. Because before this, he was betrayed by his brothers and sold into slavery. And this is where he landed. Oh, my God, how did I get way out here? Them dudes turned on me, betrayed me, and now I'm in a strange land. They sold them into slavery. They turned on them. Now, listen, the blessing doesn't stop working because something bad happened. Actually, the blessing turns a bad situation into a good situation where you always come out on top. Notice it said that the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. Somebody say the Lord is with me. See, when you're blessed and you recognize the blessing, you recognize the presence of God in your life amen that the lord is with me and because the lord is with me i'm blessed and i'm prosperous but then it says notice the master the bible said that the master saw that the lord was with him what did he see he didn't see the lord the lord is invisible he seen the results that were coming out of joseph's life that everything he put his hand to Turn into gold. What's that do? He got like five uh, horses. Now nah, he got like 20 over there. What? Multiply. And because of that, oh my God, this is good. He made him overseer of, over all that he had. See, some, some people try to get promotion prematurely.
Notice, Joseph didn't promote himself. It said the Egyptian master saw the results that was coming out of his life and put Joseph on the radar, put a resume that he didn't even have to fill out on Potiphar's desk. Mm. Look at your neighbor and said, you ain't even going to have to apply. They're going to come looking for you. They up in the offices looking at you down on the factory floor. This dude is running circles around these other guys. And why do we have other guys in charge? And this guy is, is so diligent. We need this thing not to trickle from down up. We need this thing to trickle from the top down. Here come promotion. So he made him overseer over all that he has. What is working here? It's the blessing in action. You are not hearing Joseph say anything or jockeying for position. He's just enjoying his relationship with God and being obedient, and the results are speaking for themselves. He let the blessing of God be his advertisement. Do you guys know I've never asked for a position as a Christian? I wasn't Christian. Everybody's jockeying. <laughs> but never uh, walked by an office, seen an office empty. Ooh, can I have that office? No. Nope. You know why? Because I want God to do it. I don't want to get in by manipulation because it's going to take manipulation to stay in. I want the blessing to put me in because if the blessing put me in, no weapon formed against me can prosper. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I will condemn I don't want people to say he manipulated to get there. I want people to say, how did he get there? <laughs> he let the blessing be the advertisement. Then the Lord, the Bible said that the Lord blessed the man's house. What was on top of Joseph got on the man's house. That's what I'm saying. When you're blessed, you begin to affect everybody around you. Everything begins to go up. Everybody becomes a recipient of what's on your life. Amen. If you're working for McDonald's, the production's supposed to go up. Anywhere a Christian goes, it's supposed to get better. Oh, my God. When Before you walked in, ain't nobody was coming in. Because you sat down and drinking your latte, this line is out the door. What's going on here? My God, I ain't doing none. It's nothing but the blessing. Amen. Drink your latte and watch the blessing work. Amen. Now, listen, I studied this and I know when something is significant, the Bible puts it in there. There was something about Joseph, despite his situations and circumstances, there is no account of him being negative. Or complaining. Talk about somebody that had a reason to complain. When he experienced injustice, he, he could have took him to court. But Joseph didn't complain. It seemed like he had a good attitude. It seemed like he, it's amazing how people can go through some and then breach their relationship with God. But Joseph continued his devotion to God even when uh, injustice happened to him. And we know this because when Potiphar's wife showed up, he didn't say, I can't do this because Potiphar. He said, I can't do this great sin before God Almighty. You look nice, but this blessing on my life is going to fulfill the dream that I got persecuted for, and I can't let you, honey, mess my dream up, uh, contaminate this blessing, you're not worth it. He didn't compromise. So the way you live your life is connected to how the blessing will function in your life. The worst thing is to have something working for you 
and you're doing things to work against what's working for you. They do it with people that's drowning. Somebody comes, tries to save them, and then they turn and begin to hurt the person that's trying to save them. And what are they supposed to do? Relax, submit to what's, what's trying to save you, what's trying to bring you, and that's what the blessing is. You can't fight against it. You got to rest in the Lord. You got to let God do it. You got to let the, the power of God do it. Stop trying to figure it out. Let God work it out. Let God work on you. Stop projecting five years down the line and, 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 and just say, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm not worried about tomorrow. This day, this day, give me this day my daily bread. So we can't work against what's working for us. Gentlemen, Isaiah 1, 19, we're almost done. The Bible says, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword for the mouth of the Lord is spoken. So willing and obedient, willing is talking about your attitude. And obedience is talking about your actions. So to function in the blessing, to receive the good of the land, you got to have a good attitude about doing the right thing. How many people know people can do the right thing and have a negative attitude about it? I'm doing it because you're watching, but I really don't want to do it. And I'm going to buck you as soon as you run out the room. That's not willing and obedient. That's rebelling. Your obedience to God will determine if the blessing works for you or against you. Look at your neighbor and say, stay on the right side. Don't get crazy. Don't start murmuring and complaining. It's been too long. Been too long. Two months? What? <laughs> Too long. How long were you out there running crazy? Uh, 10, 12 years. Wow, you gave the devil all that time to mess your life up, and you only giving God 30 days to fix what took 12 years to break up, mess up? My God, you give more respect to your mechanic than God. When you smash your car up and you, well, I'm going to let my car be ready. About two weeks, okay, amen. The Lord said, give me some time to work it out for you. Last scripture, Psalms 32, 12 through 14. In the Passion Translation, it says, do you want to live a long, good life? Enjoying the beauty that fills each day. Then never speak a lie or allow wicked words to come from your mouth. Keep turning your back on every sin and make peace your life model. Practice being at peace with everyone. So let me ask you what the psalmist asks you. Does anybody want to live a good life? Raise your hand. A good long life? Well, the Bible's telling you right here how to do it. Now, this is the Christians because what's, what, what does Christians have? We have the blessing. We don't want to work against the blessing. We want to work with the blessing. First rule. Don't speak death. Speak life. Speak blessing. I don't care if the devil's got on you on the road. Never say, I'm going down. No, say, I'm getting up. I'm rising up. I'm coming out. We're going to get out of this. It's going to be good. 2021 is going to be a good year. It's going to outdo last year. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Speak life. Speak life. Speak life right in the face of death. So he's saying, if you want to live a good life, don't speak a lie or allow wicked or which is twisted truth to come out of your mouth. So your words have the ability to assist the blessing or hinder the blessing. My, my kids, they be like, man, dad's legalistic. They'd be like, oh, I'm, 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 ah. 
They play a video game, be like, oh, man, I'm dead. I'll be like, don't say that. You ain't dead. The character in the game's dead. You ain't dead. Don't say that. You know why? Because the devil is a legalist. You're not dead. That, that, that uh, graphic is dead. You, you ain't, you're alive. Long life. Amen. Don't say that. <laughs> I'm a legalist. Amen. Because the devil is a legalist. Amen. So your words have the ability to assist the blessing or hinder it. Endeavor, of course, not to sin. Live a life. Don't live a life of disobedience. Live a life of obedience. Now, listen to this. It's not, you know, the Lord showed me this. You know, sometimes you can see somebody in disobedience. You, th you think, oh, my God, this guy. But sometimes it's a struggle. How do you know when it's a struggle? When you confront it. When you confront it and they repent of it. But if you confront it and they rise up, you can't tell me nothing. Rebellion. So, and also the last one, seek peace in every relationship. Amen? The Bible says don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Husbands, uh, wives, 2021, no grudges. Let's get it right. Go out for a coffee. End it on a high note. End it in the blessing. Don't go uh, play the closed shoulder. Don't play the silent treatment. Stop that foolishness. That's where the devil begins to get in. Amen. That's not love. That's disunity. And a house divided against itself cannot stand. Stop it. Husbands and wives. Amen.